Book One, Chapter Ten of Resurrection. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Resurrection by Leo Tolstoy, translated by Louise Maud, read by David Barnes. Book One, Chapter Ten: The Trial, the Indictment. The indictment ran as follows. On the 17th of January, 18, in the lodging-house Mauritania, occurred the sudden death of the second guild merchant, Therapont Emilianovich Smelkov of Korgan. The local police doctor of the 4th district certified that death was due to rupture of the heart, owing to the excessive use of alcoholic liquids. The body of the said Smelkov was interred, after several days had elapsed, the merchant Timokhin, a fellow townsman and companion of the said Smelkov, returned from St. Petersburg, and hearing the circumstances that accompanied the death of the latter, notified his suspicions that the death was caused by poison, given with intent to rob the said Smelkov of his money. This suspicion was corroborated on inquiry, which proved, one, that, shortly before his death, the said Smelkov had received the sum of 3,800 roubles from the bank. When an inventory of the property of the deceased was made, only 312 roubles and 16 kopecks were found. 2. The whole day and night preceding his death, the said Smelkov spent with Lubka, alias Katerina Maslova, at her home and in the lodging-house Mauritania, where she also visited at the said Smelkov's request during his absence to get some money, which she took out of his portmanteau, in the presence of the servants of the lodging-house Mauritania, Euphemia Botchkova and Simeon Kartinkin, with a key given her by the said Smelkov. In the portmanteau opened by the said Maslova, the said Botchkova and Kartinkin saw packets of one hundred rouble banknotes. 3. On the said Smelkov's return to the lodging-house Mauritania, together with Lubka, the latter, in accordance with the attendant Kartinkin's advice, gave the said Smelkov some white powder, given to her by the said Kartinkin, dissolved in brandy. 4. The next morning the said Lubka, alias Katerina Maslova, sold to her mistress, the witness Kitaeva, a brothel-keeper, a diamond ring given to her, as she alleged, by the said Smelkov. 5. The housemaid of the lodging-house Mauritania, Euphemia Botchkova, placed to her account in the local commercial bank 1,800 roubles. The post-mortem examination of the body of the said Smelkov and the chemical analysis of his intestines proved beyond doubt the presence of poison in the organism so that there is reason to believe that the said Smelkov's death was caused by poisoning. When cross-examined, the accused, Maslova, Botchkova, and Kartinkin, pleaded not guilty, deposing, Maslova, that she had really been sent by Smelkov from the brothel, where she works, as she expresses it, to the lodging-house Mauritania, to get the merchant some money, and that, Having unlocked the portmanteau with a key given her by the merchant, she took out forty roubles, as she was told to do, and that she had taken nothing more. That Botchkova and Kartinkin, in whose presence she unlocked and locked the portmanteau, could testify to the truth of the statement. She gave this further evidence, that when she came to the lodging-house for the second time, she did, at the instigation of Simeon Kartinkin, give Smelkov some kind of powder which she thought was a narcotic, in a glass of brandy, hoping he would fall asleep and that she would be able to get away from him. And that Smelkov, having beaten her, himself gave her the ring when she cried and threatened to go away. The accused Euphemia Botchkova stated that she knew nothing about the missing money, that she had not even gone into Smelkov's room, but that Lubka had been busy there all by herself, that if anything had been stolen it must have been done by Lubka, when she came with the merchant's key to get his money. At this point Maslova gave a start, opened her mouth, and looked at Botchkova. 
when continued the secretary the receipt for one thousand eight hundred roubles from the bank was shown to botchkova and she was asked where she had obtained the money she said that it was her own earnings for twelve years and those of simeon whom she was going to marry the accused simeon kartinkin when first examined confessed that he and botchkova at the instigation of maslova who had come with the key from the brothel had stolen the money and divided it equally among themselves and maslova here maslova again started half rose from her seat and blushing scarlet began to say something but was stopped by the usher at last the secretary continued reading kartinkin confessed also that he had supplied the powders in order to get smelkov to sleep when examined the second time he denied having had anything to do with the stealing of the money or giving maslova the powders accusing her of having done it alone concerning the money placed in the bank by botchkova he said the same as she that is that the money was given to them both by the lodgers in tips during twelve years service the indictment concluded as follows in consequence of the foregoing the peasant of the village borki Simeon Kartinkin, thirty-three years of age, the Meshanka Euphemia Botchkova, forty-three years of age, and the Meshanka Katerina Maslova, twenty-seven years of age, are accused of having, on the seventeenth day of January, 1880, jointly stolen from the said merchant Smelkov a ring and money to the value of two thousand five hundred roubles, and having given the said merchant Smelkov poison to drink with intent of depriving him of life, and thereby causing his death. This crime is provided for in clause 1455 of the Penal Code, paragraphs 4 and 5. End of Book 1, Chapter 10